All right then, welcome back. This is Business Centre right here on Metropole TV from wherever you are watching us from. This is Wednesday and of course when it's Wednesday, we are talking about agriculture and today we are talking about hydroponics farming. And earlier on, I had told you our question of the day uh, where you were supposed to be contributing to the question where we had asked you name the types of hydroponic systems that you know, the types of hydroponic systems, and we'll read some of the comments as we continue with the show. And remember to also tell us where you're watching us from. And we are here. We have uh, Joshua here, who is the co-founder of Grow Pact. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm privileged to be here. Ah, all right. Yes. Now, let's, let's begin by you uh, te telling us what hydroponic farming is. Oh, thank you. So, um, in uh, simple terms, uh, layman language, hydroponic farming is uh, where you go to crop production, food production, by passing the soil. Mm -hmm. So, you don't use the conventional soil as we know it, but you use other more uh, forms and modes of production uh, that without using the soil as we know it. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what uh, hydrop hydroponic farming is. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, these other forms, um, what can they be? Uh, the forms can take any, th any form or any substrate or uh, medium or material that can be able to uh, support a crop mm -hmm. or um, a plant to its maturity and give the intended yields. Mm -hmm. This can be any material that is inert. By inert, I mean any material that is devoid of any nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, this can be water. Uh, many, many materials. Maybe I can, uh, maybe as we go on with the conversation, I can mention some of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, pretty much most of uh, these materials are locally available in the country. All right. And yes. Okay. So um, you talk of, uh, first of all, hydropon. Let me demystify hydroponic farming. Mm -hmm. um, when people hear about hydropon hydroponic farming, they think it's uh, something that is so foreign, uh, yeah. something that needs a lot of technique, a lot mm -hmm. of technology. Uh, but basically, if you can be able to grow even on water without using the soil, you're doing hydroponic farming. If you can be able to grow on cotton, mm -hmm. if you can be able to grow on any material, as long as it doesn't have uh, soil in it, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, we consider you as a hydroponic farmer. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, really insightful. So, um, you as a co-founder of yeah. Grow Pact, yes. what is it that you, uh, that you that your company does? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, maybe to give just a short uh, brief and background about Grow Pact, Kenya Limited. Uh, Grow Pact is a company that has been founded uh, this is the fourth, fourth year, four years ago. Uh, started as a simple concept in the seed system uh, where we wanted to guarantee farmers supply of uh, high quality seedlings uh, that have been produced following high health protocols. And uh, we started this by uh, producing seedlings for our hot culture, uh, pro uh, hot culture products, tomatoes, capsicum, cabbages, kale, spinach, name them. And the group act was started by my wife and myself, Marcy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a co-founder. She's the one who is always in the farm. We are okay. farmers. All right. So, and uh, we have our main branch in Kitale. And also now, uh, for the last uh, close to about nine months, we have our branch in Embu. Mm -hmm. uh, when in the space of hydroponic, when we started the uh, group act, besides um, uh, producing seedlings in an hydroponic manner using soilless medium, uh, we wanted also to explore other uh, innovations that are sustainable, effective, mm -hmm. and that's when we came and bumped into um, hydroponic farming. Mm -hmm. And uh, the type of hydroponic farming that we have uh, at Gropat, we have close to about three. One is the uh, deep water culture, and uh, we also have uh, where you, we use um, the hydroponic material in troughs, and also we have uh, what we call um, nutrient film technique. That's where you pass water running through uh, the dangling uh, um, roots of a crop mm -hmm. and it draws nutrients from it mm -hmm. without using uh, soil, the normal soil as we know it. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So uh, the other thing also uh, that we do uh, at Grow Pact is capacity building, uh, empowerment of uh, smallholder farmers, youth groups. So uh, in a nutshell, Grow Pact has got its own business units, got different business units for seedling propagation. Mm -hmm. We have uh, demonstration plots and gardens where we train our farmers. We have the deep water culture hydroponic system. We have got uh, hydroponic uh, farming on traps where we also train our farmers. We have just started uh, a farmer's practical training center 
in collaboration with a community-based organization to disseminate and to empower farmers with all these new emerging innovations in, uh, in uh, food production that are sustainable, cheap. They can be done devoid of uh, the you know, big land, mm -hmm. uh, can be done at the balcony of your house. And uh, yeah, because we want to be a country that is uh, self-sustainable when it comes to food nutrition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And now, uh, you you speaking about hydroponics, um, Grow Park. To you, you've now said yeah. this is this is the way we want to go. Yeah. How how are you making sure that uh, you expand yeah. expand uh, not only in in where you the company is situated yeah. or the locations around? Yeah. How are you? How is your moving forward in order to make sure that may, many people in the country know about this? What are you doing um, to make sure that farmers now start embracing this form? Thank you. Uh, I think um, I think at Grow Park we embrace the fact that uh, we make the cake big and we share all of us. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the one who is in control of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, together with my wife Marcy, mm -hmm. uh, actually we, we hardly engage ourselves in so many uh, functions. We have got young people, youth who do that. But how, what we want to do, if, if uh, just if you ref just close your eyes, mm. you can be able to count a number of greenhouses in the country that are decommissioned. Uh, greenhouses that uh, you used a lot of investment to uh, install, a nice irrigation kit. Uh, the first year, second year, it's out. You cannot be able to produce a lot of uh, diseases in the soil. So you have bacterial wilt when it gets into your greenhouses and you're a tomato producer, you're out. Mm. So to demystify now the hydroponic farming that you're saying, how will I be able to be of impact mm. in Malindi where there's a greenhouse? Where will, how will I be of impact in uh, Laikipia yet, I mean uh, Kitale? Mm -hmm. Is... Um, we have come up with a way how we uh, develop different premix that uh, our farmers can be able to access. Um, it's more like a closed loop system whereby we tell the farmer, okay, you have a greenhouse that is not working. We have solutions on how to kickstart and to jump, uh, to, uh, I mean, to start your greenhouse from uh, to work. Mm -hmm. So together, we say that grow pact. Uh, we make a pact and we grow together. Ah, wow. So mm -hmm. uh, we train capacity building, we support technical support. Uh, we have... Um, um, our extension officers that uh, visit even Mombasa, our farmers in uh, Malindi, in Kilifi, mm -hmm. uh, all over the country. And uh, we are a local company, very local, in such a way that we totally understand the plight of our smallholder farmers. Mm -hmm. So the impact that you're talking about, besides what we started in Kitale, is a proof of concept first. Mm -hmm. Now we, we are the upscale face for the deep water culture. We have been uh, producing 400 heads of, le heads of lettuce every week, 365 days a year. Now we are going to multiply that times six. Uh, so we started with a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. Now we are uh, the upscale uh, phase. And the upscale phase, actually, we are doing it in partnership with a community-based organization mm -hmm. that uh, supports orphans, that supports uh, children, vulnerable uh, groups in the community. Mm. So there are many ways how you can come together. We agree, we customize, our, um, uh, or rather we agree on a way how we can be able to satisfy your needs as well as looking out uh, on our needs, mm -hmm. mutual kind of uh, partnership. Okay. Yes. Now, as a farmer, now we scale down to the farmer individually. Yeah. What is, what are some of the requirements that a farmer needs to have in order to make sure that they succeed in this hydroponic farming? I think uh, for me, um, it all starts by first of all yourself, the passion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My background is I'm not a farmer trained farmer. I'm a molecular biologist. Mm -hmm. My wife is a computer scientist. So we started first of all by passion. We had a passion, and. Uh, Besides having a day job, I started this because I started seeing that uh, that time uh, it had uh, a lot of impact on the people that I interacted with. The first thing is passion. Number two is uh, you need now to align yourself and get to know what you really want to do. You need to say, I want to go into hydroponics. I want to go this big or this small. I want to do hydroponic farming for sustainable production of my vegetables in my household, mm -hmm. in my balcony. I want to do this because I want to supply a small uh, supply chain just with my neighbor. So um, what crops do you want to grow? What space is uh, under con consideration? Um, what system of hydroponic do I want to use? What expertise is there for me to access? Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's, it, it also requ requires a lot of technical expert. 
So those are some of the things that, uh, and, and farmers don't be scared that, oh, hydroponic farming, farming is only for the big. You can <laughs> consider to start small and you grow. Mm. Yes. Yeah, be, be, because I've seen, some, someone was, was asking me, what is hydroponics farming? Is this something that we know or is it something from foreign, uh, from countries that, we, yeah. that are foreign? So uh, kindly just explain to the farmer or all of us yes. so that we understand this is something that is just like any other form of farming yeah. but it just needs this kind of uh, requirements in order to make sure that we achieve this uh, i think i'm a little bit settled in your show now i can go back and talk a little bit it's about okay it's okay uh -huh. so um hydroponic actually first of all to say the mm -hmm. trends and the projections is that by 2025 yeah. the global market share for hydroponics will be about 16.6 .6 billion us dollars mm -hmm. Uh, when you visit countries like uh, Europe, uh, the US, uh, in Asia, I have visited quite a good number of uh, um, platforms that do very autom uh, automated mm -hmm. um, uh, hydroponic systems. Mm -hmm. So you try to compare that with what we have in, in the country. Uh, but let me tell you, for instance, just mm -hmm. to demystify, mm -hmm. we use a product called Coco Pit, for instance, mm -hmm. in uh, hydroponic. Coco Pit. It's just the coconut that you know <laughs> that has been crushed and 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 uh, you know shredded broken into small pieces mm -hmm. and the you know uh, the the resulting product from that uh is a product called coco pit mm -hmm. which is used in hydroponic farming you can take it you wash it of course you have to control the ph the ec those are some technical now uh, when you go to the technical part of it yeah uh just right here in Naivasha in longonot we have what we call lava rock it's called pumice mm -hmm. Uh, small stones that uh, are as a result of the volcanic activities, uh, uh, they produce uh, uh, pumice. Uh, when you go to other advanced uh, territories, and these are some of the materials that we import, we have pit moss. We have rock wool, which is also a fibrous form of um, rock. All these are substrates and materials. We have water. I mean, water is everywhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, if uh, we would be seeing, and if you were able to see the deep water culture at Gropat, mm -hmm. it's just crops, lettuce, pak choy, yeah. uh, basil, floating on water. So it's, it's, it's no big kind of uh, um, issue when it comes to, are we able to access and uh, start uh, hydroponic farming? But to the farmer there, the only thing and the only bottleneck that we may have is the technical knowledge, the know-how, yeah. and uh, that's the bottleneck that we have. And mm. that's, where, that's why now we have partners, um, experts, mentors, coach uh, we have different uh, uh, facilitations from different institutions that are taking people through the hydroponic farming so it's something that is doable mm -hmm. it's scalable as well all right yes and now um let me just ask now for example the county the mm -hmm. county government yes is it something that um, maybe you've partnered with and that you can say they've supported in this because uh, such a course you yeah. need a lot of uh, support from almost every every um, every sector yeah. so is, is the county government uh, in uh, in partnership with you well um i'm on show i'm on live and i don't want to tell a lie <laughs> so uh, yeah. we are supported by uh, not directly mm -hmm. uh, transoya county where we is our mother plant uh, that's where we started we are supported by transoya county they are very supportive okay uh, not directly technically or in <coughs> in offering uh, like uh, extension services or anything like that but in case we go to them for, for example, certification, other licenses they will give us. We, we have a good uh, um, uh, way how we work that, that out. But I see it as a, as a low-hanging fruit. It's a point of leverage that uh, most of the county governments, and especially we have it, we, 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 we can be able to partner with most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we are so open on public-private partnerships. This is um, an innovation and a technology and that we are talking about youth unemployability. This is something that can be, this, this is the technology, it's an innovation in the agriculture sector that can be uh, the county governments being a devolved function. They can leverage on to create mm -hmm. uh, jobs, mm -hmm. uh, livelihoods, uh, all sorts of, uh, you know, positive uh, attributes from hydroponic farming. Mm -hmm. I see a little bit of a, um, maybe a mismatch on how private institutions want to grow fast with uh, how the county governments may be, are, I may be, I stand to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it's okay, no mm -hmm. problem. Now, you spoke about the technical 
uh, mm. part now of hydroponics. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move to the technical part. Yeah. Uh, what sort of water would uh, is can someone just use any water, or is there a specific uh, type of water? And you can also speak about the pH yeah. while you are still at it. Yeah. So just explain to us about this. So uh, I think um, not only for hydroponic farming, mm -hmm. even the con conventional farming as we know it. Yeah. Uh, if you're producing in the soil, in the greenhouse, a contained production, or you're doing open field production. Water is key. A very, very important aspect. Because if you have bad water, then you're doing nothing even in the hydroponic system or even in the conventional uh, crop production as we know it. Mm -hmm. So you need to know your water. You need to get your water analyzed before you start uh, uh, using it as considering it as a water, agricultural water that you can use for the production. Yeah. So just to give an example, when we started uh, our hydroponic system, we had our water analyzed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found out that the levels of biocarbonate were so high. Well, our pH was uh, somewhat optimum, our EC, but we had other elements uh, in, the, in the water that needed to be taken care of. So we had now to standardize our water to be water that is suitable for hydroponic production. So we started dosing the water with acid. Uh, to control the, I mean, to control the biocarbonate, biocarbonate levels. Mm -hmm. uh, the pH of the water is very, very important because pH, what pH does, uh, just to define to the layman what pH is, is how acidic or basic is your water. Yes. So, uh, and it ranges from 0 to 14. Mm -hmm. So, when the pH is not optimum, pH may not be an indicator of fertility in the soil or in your water, or in your uh, substrate or medium that you're using for hydroponic. But it is a factor that really contributes and controls the, availab the availability of nutrients to your crops, this ir irrespective of the system that you're using. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep a, an optimum pH of about 6. Uh, an EC of about, uh, in our hydroponic, we have an EC of about 1 to 1.2. Now this is a technical uh, know-how, and that's why I'm saying um, that for a farmer who wants to start, or who is experiencing difficulties, in the hydroponic system, irrespective of the system that you're using. Are you using vertical growing in uh, pipes where you fill in cocoa pit or pumis? Are you using troughs with vermiculite, uh, cocoa pit, pit moss, whatever it is? You need to monitor the integrity or the, uh, the composition, actually, of uh, the substrate that you're using or the medium that you're using for this case for your hydroponic. Mm -hmm. So it is, you have to get, uh, before you develop your own capacity, mm -hmm. get a mentor, get a coach, um, a business uh, uh, person who is experienced in uh, hydroponics who can take you through. And we have quite a number of platforms mm -hmm. in Kenya that you can be able to start from. Group right. being one of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it's okay. Now, you being, of course, part of a company that deals with this, yeah. tell us some of the benefits that you've uh, experienced using hydroponic farming. Yeah. Yes. So, hydroponic farming has got a lot of benefits. Mm -hmm. um, one is that... Uh, E efficient use of water. Uh, for example, the system that we have, we have the deep water culture documented uh, from us and also from other literature elsewhere that you're going to use, you're going to save 75 to 85 percent water. Wow. So uh, our, deep, uh, our, de uh, our deep water culture, just like a basin, mm. you know, mm -hmm. you have a basin, you have got a floater, you put crops uh, in holes on the floater, mm -hmm. and your work is just to stir the water. So you're just taking care of uh, evaporation, maybe leakages in the basin. It's just, uh, you know, uh, just trying to give a description. Mm -hmm. So efficient use of water. Uh, you can be able to produce, imagine, 365, you know, uh, throughout the year. You can be able to harvest almost every week, mm. all the 50-something plus weeks that we have uh, in the year. We are not, uh, when you practice hydroponic farming, you will, not be rely, uh, you will not rely on the rain-fed mm. um, uh, production. So if it's raining, it's okay. If it's not raining, fair enough. I'm in the market with my products, mm -hmm. my, my produce. So you can produce year-round. Uh, you, you, produ you produce actually more crops per square meter. Uh, in one of our hydroponics where we are doing lettuce, uh, we have seen that you can actually triple or four times more than you can do actually per, per square meter in the open field. Mm -hmm. You tend to produce uh, crops that uh, are of high quality uh, because everything is almost standardized. You've created a micro environment. You're taking care of your crops. And uh, yeah, there are many, many benefits that uh, you can uh, you, you have in uh, going hydroponic. 
and some pros. of the disadvantages. Yeah. <laughs> well, everything with pros and cons. Eh? <laughs> yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. maybe for Rafama who's starting. Yes. Uh, sometimes the starting cost is a little bit, uh, not like getting your seedling mm. and planting it outside your uh, your, uh, your your backyard or leasing one acre or five acres of land and, pl and planting. So sometimes the startup capital is uh, a little bit high because you have to consider I have to buy the you know the equipment, I have to buy the the substrate, mm -hmm. I have to uh, equip myself with the with the necessary know-how how to do it. So some. Most of the time, that's a bottleneck mm. on, on starting the cost mm -hmm. of uh, starting. But you can start small and you can upscale, you can scale. Mm. Yes. And now, um, for example, a farmer might say, um, I don't want to use hydroponics mm -hmm. because uh, maybe the pro I don't believe that the plants that are coming out of this system mm -hmm. are the same as the ones in soil. Mm -hmm. Of course, someone may, might say that. Mm -hmm. So um, explain to us just... Of course, the plants coming out of hydroponics and the same um, in the shamba, mm -hmm. they're the same, right? Yes. Yeah, just explain to us more about this. Because someone might say, may I can't use this system. Um, yeah. What would I say? Oh, it's like drinking water with a straw and another <laughs> one drinking from a cup. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, because the, the, the crops actually are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe what we have is a lot of perceptions and uh, misinformation. Yes. Uh, we lack uh, uh, to inform our farmers, um, startups, on actually exactly what happens. So just to guarantee the farmers, if you plant uh, a lettuce plant in the soil, and I plant a lettuce uh, plant on hydroponic, irrespective of the system that I'm using, those crops are the same. Uh -huh. Actually, um, the ones that is in hydroponic may, be div may, may lack a lot of... Uh, uh, contaminants that are there as we harvest, uh, worms that are in the soil. Mm -hmm. So actually in terms of hygiene, hydroponics uh, produce, uh, well, may, I'm not <laughs> saying that they do, may. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a high possibility that uh, we produce uh, products that are of a higher hygiene uh, standard than uh, the, the open field. So you don't have to, uh, to be scared about, uh, uh, is, is there going to be a variation between what is produced in the market uh, or, or rather in the open field and what I produce, uh, or rather through hydroponic, sorry, through hydroponic and what I produce uh, the conventional way uh, uh, in the soil. Mm. Actually, the benefit is in, into the farmer. Mm. Imagine you have a 500 meter squared greenhouse that you cannot be able to produce a tomato because bacteria will, is in the soil. Mm. You get troughs, dam liners, fill them with cocoa peat, pumice, vermiculite, and in a couple of months, you the benefit is to the farmer. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And now, lastly, as we uh, wrap up, yes. Um, Grow Pact. Um, ways, what is the way forward for you? Because, uh, of course, someone might say, "I want to be an hydroponics farmer, and I need uh, Grow Pact to guide me through." Yeah. So explain to us. Um, thank you for mm. that question. That's very very nice. Mm. And uh, first of all, to say that we. We don't walk alone. We stand on the shoulders of very uh, experienced people. Mm -hmm. We have got uh, a very close partnership and relationship with a, with a company in Europe called Viscon. Mm -hmm. uh, in the pyramid of technology in Europe, they are somewhere in the apex, in the top there. So we get uh, technical advice every Monday morning. Mm. We have got our technical team that sits with them. I am not part of that team, <laughs> but we have young girls and boys who follow that through. So the way forward for Grow Pact when it comes to uh, hydroponics farming is that we only see uh, uh, upscale, we multiplying uh, our own production, but also through the Farmers Practical uh, Training uh, Institute or other center that is been started is in Kitale, our satellite center in Embu. Mm -hmm. uh, we can only train and equip more people with the knowledge um, on how to uh, get into hydroponic uh, farming. Mm -hmm and different methods. we piloting different methods on how to in increase the efficiency. Uh, we have a new method that we want to try. It's called the pyramid. It's a pyramid uh, system of uh, production that actually almost doubles uh, the production per square meter. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, Grow Pact is a, is a farm. We are farmers. It also needs to be sustainable. All this is uh, in agreement with, with the farmer. How big do you want to go, start, or how small do you want to start? And what are your plans for uh, scaling up? Mm. So uh, in the future, we see ourselves rolling out more uh, 
um, systems and uh, uh, platforms for uh, hydroponics. Yeah, I think uh, mm -hmm. when it comes, but as, as, as grow Act as a whole, we see ourselves being an enabler to farmers to increase their yield, um, become more profitable, and uh, yeah, run uh, um, farming as a, as a sustainable enterprise, as a business. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Uh, no, no problem. That is really, really insightful. And thank you so much for thank joining you. us today. Thank you. And before we go for a short break, I have a message here um, where we, uh, for our question of the day, we had asked you to name types of um, hydroponic systems that you know. And we have... Um, Rieza Waruiru says, We, yo swali ya leo ni mlima Kevin. <laughs> Thank you so much for contributing to that. Um, um, Joshua, yes. is there anyone you want to, to say hi to? Because I've, I've heard you mentioning. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just say and then we go for a short Yeah, yeah because I uh, come from Kitale, of course. Uh, natuma salamu kwa bibiangu. Masi. <laughs> <laughs> she may be somewhere in the farm watching. Eh? All right. So to my wife, she's the one actually who runs the show. Mm -hmm. For me, I just come in... Uh, to advice and uh, yeah kwasumbua kidogo ah uh, it's okay it's okay <laughs> yeah nothing much yes ah, all right. and and of course uh, to uh, all the staff at uh, grow parts mm -hmm. uh, in kitale and in embu to all our clients all our off takers all our partners i know I, our partners in europe are following this actually uh yeah all right yes thank you all right thank you so much for joining us yes all you. right uh, all right we'll go for a short break and when we come back we'll go through innovations and agri facts of hydroponics